All right, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. So we're gonna take a little break this weekend from the big uh, Royal Line uh, generator, engine generator project, and get back to the old Caterpillar. You know, back by popular demand, I guess you could say. Now I've, ne I've neglected this project for, you know, going on six months now, and I haven't really done any anything with it. So I kinda wanna jump back into it here and there and make a little bit of progress on it. Today's gonna be a pretty quick video. I've got two new cylinder liners here. I wanna install these in the engine and check uh, liner protrusion uh, against the, the deck, the block deck, and see if, we've, if we're gonna have to do any machine work on the block. We're not gonna install them permanently. We're not gonna put any of the seals on or anything, but we're gonna set them in the block and actually use a dial indicator to check the protrusion. So let's get started. All right, well, before we proceed, I thought I'd point out a few differences between the original liner here and the new liners we'll be using. So the original liner, I don't know if this is a technical name, but I just call it a flat top liner. You see the actual surface, the top of the deck there is smooth. Whereas the new liners have a step. Can you see that? The step is about maybe 40 thousandths high. The new liners also have what's called, a, well they have a groove for what's called a filler band. Cat calls it a filler band at least. And uh, it's essentially another O-ring seal to aid in keeping coolant from seeping up past the shim and past the liner up to the area between the head gasket and the uh, block deck. The, uh, the new liners also have three uh, lower liner seal grooves. So the original liners only have two. Now the third groove is pretty much just to protect the chamfer that's at the bottom of the water jacket that allows the o-rings here to, to sit in. This, this top o-ring doesn't actually sl slip in to do any sealing. It really just protects that chamfer from corrosion. So that's really all the difference. All the differences there are. I mean, they look a little bit different. The machining looks a bit different. There's the steps are in different locations, but really they're they're pretty much the same. Other than that, so let's uh, let's hop up on the engine and uh, we'll go ahead and install them. Oh, you know what? One more thing. I guess since I mentioned that step on top of the uh, the liners, here's a here's an original head gasket, and I'm going to set it up on the liner here, and you can see that the gasket seals on the lower rim of the cylinder liner. So I, I'm not exactly sure why they went with the uh, that upper lip there. Maybe that's so that you can't over compress the gasket. The, the cylinder head will bottom out on this upper level here. Kind of an interesting thing. If anybody knows why they uh, they changed from the flat top to these uh, multi-level liners, uh, put it down in the comments. One more thing, We've got new uh, shims here for the uh, liners. The uh, the originals were thirty thousandths, so I went ahead and I ordered new thirty thousandth shims. They're available in a couple different thicknesses. I believe something like six, seven, and eight, and fifteen thousand thicknesses, depending on whether or not you've got to uh, recut the counter bores in the block. So let's get up there and take a look. All right, so we're up here at the engine, taking a look at the, the deck of the block. Now, if you remember from a few months ago, I, uh, I ran, went ahead and I ran a, uh, a stone over the, the deck here just to knock off any of the high spots around, around the bolt holes, around these water passages, uh, especially these 5 8 holes here. So you can see on a few of them, the, the material was actually pulled up relatively high. So, and we took a straight edge and uh, checked for any low areas, and it checked out pretty well. There might have been uh, one or two areas where you could see a little bit of light, but if I recall, they weren't uh, in an area that's gonna cause a problem. So really what we're concerned with today is 
This area right here, this is the cylinder liner counter bore where that gasket, that shim, they call it a gasket in my, in my parts book, but that shim sits. So I've taken a depth micrometer and I've gone around the cylinders to check and see if there's any anomalies in the depth from the deck here to the edge of the counter bore. And they're all pretty consistent, all the cylinders all the way around. They come in at about 525 thousandths depth. So we're only going to do cylinders one and two today because I only have two liners. The other four I do not have yet. So let me set you up on the tripod and we'll get uh, some li the two liners up here and start this process. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I've got a shim here. I'm just going to wipe it down and make sure there's no dirt or grit on it or anything. Give the, uh, the counter bore a final wipe come out clean. Just set the shim in there. And I'm gonna got a new liner over here. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna I'm just wiping the underside of the <clears throat> lip of the liner. Make sure there's no dirt or anything there. Got our new cylinder liner here got some weight to it. So go ahead and real gently like lower it down into the block. Okay. Now typically it wouldn't slip down there so easily because there would be the seals on it. The filler band and the two lower liner seals. So now that that's sitting in there, you know what, I'm just going to put this other shim right in here so I don't drop it. So to, to check protrusion, we've got to clamp this liner down in place. And to do that, I've made up this little bracket here and installed a few studs to allow me to clamp that liner down. So I've got two little shims of aluminum just to set on the edge of the liner, just so we don't have steel on steel. Okay, I've got couple nuts and washers here. Now we got to torque these to 50 foot pounds. And we're going to do it in two steps. We'll start 25 foot pounds and we'll go up to 50. This is a funny torque wrench. It's, it's got an electronic display, but it's, it's still like a, just a spring type. Oh, too far. Okay, turn that down. All right, so now I'm gonna bring you a bit closer and I'll show you 
where, where we're going to be taking our measurement. Bear with me here. So the area I'm concerned with, or the difference that I'm concerned with, is the area between this surface and this surface. Wow, that didn't focus at all, did it? Maybe I better just do this by hand. Sounds like a good idea. So the liner's clamped down, and this is what I'm concerned with, is this height versus this height. This height here should be six thousandths plus or minus two thousandths higher than this. So now when you take these measurements you have to take it in four places. So typically it's you know one, two, three, and four. Now the difference between any of those four measurements cannot be greater than one thousandth of an inch. Also the difference between the average height or the average protrusion height of this liner versus the adjacent liner cannot be greater than one thousandth of an inch. So this might be a bit difficult to do one handed, but I'm going to try it. So just got a simple tool here, dial indicator on a nice fixture with a nice ground flat edge. Make sure there's no dirt or anything on the block. Set the tool on there. Okay, so we'll get our reference point with the tip of the indicator just on the deck next to the liner, and we're already at zero because I've done this before. <laughs> so I'm going to lift the needle of the indicator up and set it on the the deck of the blah of the well not the deck but the ceiling surface of the liner and press down firmly and what do we have four thousandths that is right at the the limit of the spec for protrusion so I got four thousandths there let's move on this one might be kind of hard for you to see wipe the base of the tool wipe the deck of the block, and try that again. This is a little bit tricky on this side because I, I don't want the tool to fall off. Uh, okay, you know what, you saw it once. Let me set you on the tripod for the next couple measurements. Okay, we'll check this side. Make sure the indicator is on zero. Four thousandths again. So I'm going to have to get in your way here. Four. four. All right. So they're all four thousandths. The average of that is four thousandths. So that looks good. 
Let's go ahead and put uh, liner number two in and check that one. Wipe that shim down. Okay. Wipe the underside of this liner lip liner. Okay. Move, move the clamping fixture over. So of course, I'm going to have to take these liners back out to install the seals. But really, I just wanted to make sure, I wanted to do this and make sure that I wasn't going to have to cut the counter bores, which is a process because I don't own that tool. I would have to borrow that tool. You can see how much force we exerted. We crushed that little piece of aluminum there. Now, when I remove these liners, I'm going to mark them where they went, which, which hole they came out of, and in which way they were, their orientation was. There's already marks on the deck from the original liners. So I'm just gonna take a little Sharpie marker and put a line on the liner, a line on the liner, a mark on the liner, just so I know. That way I don't have to Remeasure them and recheck the uh, protrusion. That's actually something that they say in the manual. If you don't get the correct protrusion the first time around, loosen the clamp, rotate the liner, and try it again. And if that doesn't work, take a liner and put it down another hole. Maybe you'll get it. To, maybe you'll get one that works. But this one is, like I said, it's at the edge of the spec, but it's still in the spec. So we're going to run with that. Should be already at 25 here. Yep. All right, let's check this one. I'm just gonna leave you guys there, but I'll zoom you in a little bit. Now, typically, you know, if I was doing this on a customer's unit, or if I had all six liners, I would uh, be writing all these measurements down, just so I don't forget but since we're only doing the two liners and this one came out perfect as far as the, the measurements being all the same, so I know what the average was. But typically you'd, it's good practice to write them all down.
And again, that's four. It makes sense that they would all be about four thousandths or all about the same because the, the counterboard depths were the same. The shims are all thirty thousandths and the liner lip is about five hundred thousandths. That's dead on four. I might have to go around you guys here. Zone zero. Four. Zero. And bang on four. Okay, well, so. Nothing, uh, nothing too exciting there. We got an average of four thousandths and an average of four thousandths. So really, these two are good. Now, when I get the other four liners, we're gonna have to continue this process. But I thought this might be interesting for some of you guys. I'm gonna try to keep up with the videos on this uh, as I can. Really, it's to the point where it's, uh, it's time to spend the money on this thing. And these liners from CAT are about $250 a piece. Now I can get aftermarket liners for about $100 a piece. But initially, see I bought, I only, I only bought two liners initially because I was only gonna do cylinders three and four because they were the rusted up ones. But now that I took a closer look at the rest of them, I mean, they're all pretty well worn out. And that's not because of high hours. This thing only has 2,500 hours on it. It's really just the, the maintenance that was done on it. It's similar to the, the, the Royal line, where the oil in the thing was probably the original stuff from 1939 that was never changed. And the thing wasn't exercised frequently, so just constant, well, not constant, but always dry starts, where uh, the cylinder walls were dry. And that... Uh, all that wear occurs pretty early, you know, on startup. The first 15 seconds, they say, are the worst for an engine. So, all right, well, I hope you found that interesting. I think uh, before we cut, we're going to take a look at the camshaft here. Let me step on down off the deck of the trailer. Now, this was a point that I brought up uh, in, a, in the last video regarding the uh, these cam lobes here that had some some surface rust evident on them. Now I've gone ahead and kind of polished a couple of them here. And polish this one bearing up a little bit. So I'm going to run this cam. I'm going to polish the thing up and run it. You know, there's, you know, for, for the amount of work and run time this engine's going to get once it's done, I don't think there's any reason to be concerned. So again, thanks for checking it out and I'll try to have more updates in the future.